Welcome back to part two of this new cut-in central heating and air installation. If you haven't seen part one, please do so. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and very important, hit that bell icon so that you can get notified whenever I put out a new video. And all right, well, let's get right to it. Right here, you can see that I am securing the furnace stands and to the platform. Then after that, I'm going to mount that furnace on top of those furnace stands. Then I will be putting vibration isolator pads in between so that the vibration does not transfer as easily into the galvanized sheet metal stands and then into the plywood and then into the home. That's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so this was a huge pet peeve of mine that this insulation inside the furnace with the blower compartment goes on not just Goodman but most other brands this insulation was coming off and blocking the, the blower and then causing your evaporator coil to freeze but I'm happy to see that Goodman solved this problem they now are putting pins they solved it see that I don't know if you can see where my finger is pointing good job Goodman now it's time to mount the furnace on the furnace stands. I'm just trying to see that it's level and I'm gonna put the vibration isolator pads in between the furnace stands and the furnace. The flanges on the furnace have to be bent out so that you can uh, screw the evaporator coil to the furnace. That's what I'm doing right here. So you might or might have not noticed that furnace stand that I put underneath there to hold the evaporator coil up. That's only temporary because I'm going to strap it up so in order to be able to put the drain pan underneath it. Now I'm screwing the evaporator coil to the furnace. And for that I used an uh, inch and a half, I believe, uh, galvanized sheet metal screws. Then mastic tape to seal all the joints. Okay, so there's... Uh, this part right here of the evaporator coil i have the camera mounted on the back of the coil looking forward towards the front of the coil and you see this part right here well i'm gonna pop that up and put a, a screw to hold it tight because for whatever reason uh, this happens sometimes i've noticed on on these aspen coils okay so this seam right here i'm gonna seal it with a duct sealer but uh, the one that comes in this caulking gun I, I, I noticed that it makes a lot cleaner of a seal um, than using any kind of a, a foil tape or even brushing it on this makes it a lot cleaner and I like the way it looks okay so I know what you're thinking here smooth it out with your finger it'll look better but I've done that before and I think this looks better Okay, so now we are looking at the evaporator coil. I'm showing you that the bubble is leaning towards the back. That means it has pitched towards the front, which is what we want every single time. It's perfectly level. Um, and our drains are in this part. So if anything, that's gonna bring the water up this way towards this direction. So we're good. Now I'm uh, putting these little boxes underneath the drain pan. Uh, so that I can make sure that the drain pan is covering the entire evaporator coil. The, this helps me to hold it up as I strap it. Now I, I put a level inside the pan so that when I strap it, I can make sure that I have a good pitch towards the front and not towards the sides. Now I'm strapping the drain pan to the furnace with this inch and a half metal strap. Here I'm just getting the strap ready, this other strap, because this one's going to go on the actual supply plenum. So if I pre-drill the hole and, and just uh, secure the bottom part, it'll make it a lot easier to screw on to the supply plenum later. And now I'm strapping the evaporator coil. The way that I like to strap it is I like to, kind of like a swing, I like to wrap the strap underneath and up and over so that uh, it grabs the entire coil from underneath. I don't have to screw it into the coil. The way that I like to put my straps is I like to use the level. <laughs> so 
so that the strap looks plumb. Now that I strapped the evaporator coil, I can remove the furnace stand and slide the drain pan underneath the evaporator coil. And now it's time to assemble the supply plenum. So after uh, you assemble your plenum, then I have to um, bend the flanges back so that I can have something to screw into the evaporator coil. And of course, all the seams on the supply plenum also get sealed with mastic tape. And something that I hate to do is that these supply plenums that are made uh, for the evaporator coil, they never really fit exactly. You always have to do a little bit of modifying so that they can fit. They're usually either, usually they're too small from one side. And now I'm installing the supply plenum. Then the mastic tape. And I like to use these little white plastic spatulas that uh, you can squeegee the tape on really good so that it doesn't come off easily. So now it's time to install the straps to hold up the supply plenum and help give the whole system a little bit more support. And in this case I do screw the strap to the actual supply plenum because I know there's no evaporator coil right there that I can accidentally puncture. So now I'm installing the seismic straps for the system because in California we have earthquakes so we have to uh, so strap the system so that it doesn't move around too much because that can cause damage uh, to the vent pipe, the gas pipe, the drain pipe, the refrigerant pipes it can cause all kinds of damage so we definitely do not want this thing to be swaying back and forth during an earthquake. So uh, what that basically involves, and I'll show you later on in the video, it's just an X with the straps so that the unit doesn't move forwards and backwards and then uh, another X uh, from left to right so that the unit doesn't sway left to right. Alright guys, so halfway through this uh, video editing, uh, my microphone went bad. So I had to upgrade to a, another microphone, but I don't know if it's an upgrade. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Uh, I think this sounds worse and it's picking up like so much of the background noise like my neighbor's dogs. But anyways, uh, I'm putting the insulation now on the return plenum. Uh, they used to come lined before, you know, that means that they came insulated uh, on the inside, which makes it so much easier and it looks so much better. It helps the system to sound more quiet if you um, have it lined on the inside because there's no echoing inside uh, because of the metal. So the noise doesn't transfer as easily through the ducts into your vents. Uh, but unfortunately, this is what I have to do. Um, I have to line it myself in order to get a better uh, job done. All right, so now that I've already insulated the return plenum, I'm assembling it. And one of the things that I've learned that I have to do is uh, I have to put some screws on at least two screws on each of the or three at the each of the joints because it, it the those snap-on clips or whatever you hammer on they're just not good enough they're, they whenever you strap it like give it some seismic straps um, it, it'll warp the return plenum or even the supply plenum the same thing so if you can uh, drive some screws uh, not just hammer it together but also drive some screws through it so that you can uh, make it more sturdy um, it's gonna save you a headache in the future so again with the return plenum do the same thing we have to seal all the joints uh, we seal the cap and the seams on the sides okay so now we're installing the return plenum but before we do that we need to measure the furnace opening and the return plenum opening just to make sure uh, that we place it just so because um, there's still I don't understand why but there's some kind of lost in translation kind of deal going on where they don't make them the size of, of the furnace so you would think that like a major manufacturer like Goodman could talk to a sheet metal company and say hey I need my return plenums made this size but apparently there's some kind of um, miscommunication and, and or they don't care, I don't know what's going on, but 
They never match exactly. You always have to make them work. So this also gets sealed. This joint also gets sealed with um, that mastic tape, which is super sticky. Once you stick that thing on and you rub it with that uh, little white plastic spatula that you see me using, that thing's not going to come off. If you don't use a little white plastic spatula, it might come off. I've seen some in the past where I've gone back for uh, return visits where they didn't use it. And the tape actually comes off. As sticky as it is, it'll come off. But not after you uh, stick it with that spatula. Alright, so now I am cutting the holes for the return ducts. I'm going to put two return ducts. Um, and they're going to be suspended up high in the attic ceiling so that when you crawl inside uh, you'll be able to um, easily access the furnace with uh, not having to climb over any ducts. <laughs> 